Morning, Morning. Can we start off with team news for, for the weekend, please? Yeah, team news. Uh, we got one player injured, and that's Adrian. Yeah, he he felt calf after the West Brom game, not during the game, and then he reported it day day after. And uh, unfortunately, it's like a it's a minor injury, but because it, it, it's calf and calf is always a bit dodgy, so he's gonna he's out tomorrow, and probably out. Uh, out for out till the till the end of the season, yeah, like three games. But uh, maybe he will be okay. You never know. But yeah, that's the situation. He's the only one that's injured. You've got an able deputy in Randolph. Ah, we have a great deputy in, in Randolph. Yeah, I mean, whenever we needed him, that was in the beginning of the season when when Adrian got a red card in the second game against Leicester. Randy stepped in for 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 three games and he was brilliant. And then, as you know, he he was playing in the FA Cup, and he's one of the biggest reasons why we why we went quite far in the FA Cup. He was great against uh, against Manu away. He was really good home against Manu. He was brilliant against Liverpool home and away. So, as I said, we are we are happy to have him here. He's. He's a great goalkeeper, basically. Three games left. Yeah. You're still in with the chance <clears throat> of a top four finish. Has that surprised you? Have you surprised yourself? Has, has the team surprised you to be in this position? Uh, yes and no. You know, you. We're always approaching before the season, quite optimistic, and I hoped, me and my staff, we hoped and we expected us to, 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 to. I mean, it was our job to try to make a good team that's playing good and that is that is winning as many games as possible. Uh, so I hoped for that uh, in one way, also expecting it. In the other hand, of course, you know you know it's Premier League and that very easy you can be in trouble. Yeah, but uh, let's say that we are we are doing well and good. Uh, but that's that's what we we set our uh, wishes or goals or whatever quite high, and they are still high, and we are we are really happy, and we are we are grateful that we are with three games to go in a, in 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 a competition for European place. Whether you're talking about top four, which is quite hard but possible, or top six, uh, we are there. We are there, but we have to be on top of our game in every of these three games, no matter if we're talking about top four or, or, or top six finish or top seven finish even. Yeah, there are a couple of teams like, like below us, you know, that are playing good that and they are capable of winning their games. They are, they are basically winning like we are winning and uh, the gap is not so big. So we will have to basically collect as many points as possible uh, to to keep that gap. Leicester achieved what many thought was impossible, yeah. that would never happen. Two-part question, can you quite believe they've achieved what they did and has it given hope and inspiration to a club like West Ham that maybe they could be the Leicester of next season? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, they gave hope to every football or whatever sport club in in the world, not only here. I mean, they are talking about Leicester. In it's not only Premiership story. It's it's story in Croatia. It's story in Germany, Turkey, Italy, Brazil, anywhere. They are like uh, they are the team. They are, I mean, I don't know. They will probably when they vote next year, the team of the season. Like I don't know. It was All Blacks or whoever. Now it's it's going to definitely be Leicester. As a sport team, not only football team, so they they gave hope to to every let's say smaller club that it's possible or that nothing is impossible. Basically, uh, in the other hand, it's a miracle, and why we are calling it a miracle, and why we're calling it one off, or you are calling it one of the press, the media, and all that. 
because unfortunately it happens, I don't know, once in uh, 10, 15, 20 years. But it can happen. It can happen. As you approach the, the final games at Upton Park, yeah. there'll be emotional games as well because of the, the history of the stadium. Is it a challenge for you to tell the players to detach the emotion from the actual game? Yeah. Is that something that you're going to have to To be do? fair, we don't think about uh, Man United game. I mean, we have three games to go, but I told the guys we have one game. We have one game, and it's really like that. We have one game, and that's a game against Swansea. Because uh, if we beat Swansea, I mean, the game against Man United, it's the last game ever to be played at Upton Park and all this. It's Man United, and it's a special kind of a game anyway. And then after that, you have Stoke game that hopefully is going to be another cup final for us. So tomorrow we have a very dangerous game and we have to be really and only concentrate on it uh, because otherwise those couple of games will not be or would not be so, so important for us. And if we want to, we spoke a few minutes ago about about our position that 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 we have to be uh, on top of all three games so basically it's the only we have one game and that's the game that we are playing tomorrow against Swansea and we need to be totally focused and concentrate only only on that game not thinking about man united not thinking about stoke not thinking about all those things last game of this uh, last game ever to be played at uh, bowling ground or whatever uh, only Stokes, uh, Swansea, Swansea, Swansea tomorrow, yeah. Massive game for us, massive. I know you're just focusing on that, but I'm going to ask you something slightly more long term. If there was to be European football and uh, the Olymp at the Olympic Stadium, that combination, how much will that help you attract uh, a high level of player for next season? Well, I... I uh I don't have problem saying that. Uh, first of all, we have a good team. We have a good team here. If we want to improve, if we want to get some players, okay, some of those players can be young prospects or whatever, squad players and all that. But if we're going to buy, then we're going to buy only the players who are better than we have, let's say. Uh, that is not easy to find. But, uh, yeah, on the other hand, it already happened in West Ham that uh, for some reason, good season, Olympic Stadium, West Ham is a kind of a cool club or whatever that's growing. Uh, in this year, uh, during this year or during this season, um, many players who were like not on our list last year, whatever, they, they, they seem to be very keen of coming or at least considering West Ham as an option. You talk about those players, the final for me is Michi Bachui, one of those players. Bachuai, you mean Bachuai. Do a homework, do a homework. Michu Bachuai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, of, of course, he's a top striker playing for Marseille. Big club scoring goals there, very young Belgium international. Mm, already a few years playing on a top level, scoring goals either for Standard Liège or for Marseille now. He's he's a very good player, yeah. That's all that I can say now in this moment. But but about these offers it's 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 simply not true like what is in the papers. As yeah. usual. <laughs> Um, just coming from me, you said you sort of got three cup finals, three important games coming up. How important is it that two of those are at home? Well, it is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are proud to have a good home record, uh, and that we didn't lose since since first couple of home games this season, and. Uh, it means a bit, okay. It is now. Nowadays, the football became like not the not 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 the same whether you play home or away. But still, you are playing home. We have a great crowd. We have a good memories now. Like last game or two games 
before three games, four games, five games before we were like, we are in a good mood uh, when we're playing home and uh, it is advantage for us, of course, uh, to have two out of three last games uh, at Upton Park. Just one more, going back to, to leading up to part this quickly. Speaking to Martin Noble yesterday and he was saying that it hasn't, for someone like him that's been here for so long, big part of his life, hasn't actually sunk in yet that yeah, I mean, Upton Park will, will be no more at, at the end of this season. Is it something like that for you? Have you thought about the fact that it won't be anymore or, is it, or you not thought about it yet? Well, I don't know, yeah. I mean, we are talking about that the whole season. But you're only talking about it, you know, until you feel it, uh, until you experience it, until you see like it is happening like no more. Then, then, then it hits you, big time. No, no matter, no matter how much you prepare yourself for that or talk about it. Uh, I mean, you can't compare myself with Mark Noble. Uh, I love him and all that, but Mark is, I mean, my dad didn't bring me when, when I was seven year old to see the game. Yeah. So for Mark it is extra. Oh, West Ham boy. But uh, I don't know, you have my daughter, she's 12 in Croatia and she told me to get a little bit of grass for her, you know, <laughs> and to keep it. <laughs> so, so, uh, but it is special and uh, I said before, and I have no problem saying it, we, we're going to miss it next season. This stadium that we are moving on, it's great, it's big, it's, uh, it's like uh, flashy, trendy, whatever you call it, but Upton Park is like a home fortress, you know. You know, when you are moving homes, or especially when those homes or flats, I don't know, houses or flats, were during your childhood or whatever, no matter that you are moving to bigger apartments or houses or whatever, still you, the one you miss in is the one that you spend your childhood in with your parents or whatever. Um, so Swansea had a big win against Liverpool to secure their status. What are you expecting from them tomorrow? Oh, expecting they are safe now. Okay, they were safe before Liverpool, but not mathematically or whatever. They, but now they are. They are safe, they were in trouble. Let's say when we played them in December, it was, I think, they were 17, 18, whatever, and they changed the manager. First it was care caretaker and then, and then, and then big name for, from Italy, Guidolin, who done a tremendous job with Udinese. Uh, okay, they are safe in one hand, in the other hand, as I said before, what for game? I've seen many times teams when they are playing without that negative kind of a pressure that they are producing best football. No, but they they will very it's gonna be very difficult. They can play calm, they can play they can enjoy it. Big occasion, full up Tom Park, important game for the opponent for us. But they can't be in that crazy red zone because they're safe. And you said only a point behind Man United in fifth. How important is it to get the victory tomorrow to then go into Tuesday night fully knowing what, what's at stake? As you said, that's why I keep saying, and I told the players that we have only one game and we have to, not only towards, to, to keep the distance or to go over them. But not to look only Man U and even Man City, but to keep the gap between us, Southampton and Liverpool. So tomorrow is, is the, the game, the game.